That's it. Uh, this is really something that comes from WCF Data Services because under the hood the uh, Windows Azure SDK uses WCF Data Services because table storage is compatible with, with this way of, of accessing data. So we need the, the previously mentioned two very important properties here, partition key and row key. And last but not least, we have this timestamp uh, attribute here. It is used to, to implement optimistic concurrency. Now we can add the missing properties here. We have a property that has a date time and it's called uh, order date. And then we have a string. Uh, it's the customer name and last but not least we have the amount uh, note that I do not use decimal here because table storage does not support all data types that are available in C sharp um, decimal for instance is not available and therefore we have to uh, deal with uh, with double here build this one Build started, build succeeded, that's fine. So now we can get back to our web role and create an instance of um, the, the new order class here. Our order payload equals to new order. And define the properties. First one, partition key equals to, um, in our case we can use the previously defined uh, table name uh, row key equals to uh, this one is order ID dot to string Oops, sorry then we have the order no the timestamp equals to date time but now then we have the order date equals to date time dot parse from columns zero oh time dot parse then we have the customer name equals to columns one and last but not least we have our amount equals to double dot parse columns two well that's fine now we have uh, the instance of the order class here and we have to store it so we say connection connection dot table client dot get data service context. We get a WCF data service context here, a so called table service context or table context. Oh, we could do that outside of the loop. It's not a good idea to do that for every single record and for every single column. And now we can say table context dot add object. First parameter defines the entity set name CSC. Oh, sorry. CSC. It's our cloud storage connection dot order table name. And second one is the entity or the payload. This is exactly the instance that we have created a few moments ago here, up there. And I can save it. Table context dot save change it with the retries. It will retry saving uh, the changes three times. I mean, we use rest under the hood, so it is a good idea to retry if it doesn't work for the first time. And yeah, that's it. As you can see, it's really, 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 really simple to um, write data on the one hand into table storage. Here you can see the two lines of code that, that are necessary for that. And it's also even, even simpler to add a message to a queue. Just say order queue to that message. One last piece of code is missing here. Maybe you can remember here we have specified that our configuration setting is stored in a setting named storage connection string and we haven't added this one to our CS config file. Um, for now I will show you something else. I will double click here on the role and of course you can always manually uh, edit the CS config and CS dev file but you also have a, a nice uh, little uh, wizard here. You can just say, oops I forgot the name, storage connection string, sorry. Um, 
you can also add here storage connection string say hey guy this one is a connection string and you have this nice little wizard and for my uh, purposes use development storage is perfectly okay and as you can see use development storage equals true is the correct and right setting okay this one looks good and I would suggest let's try it hit F5 fire up the, at the application be patient for a second here we have the application yes of course you want my file upload page here okay that's nice select the upload file CSV here hit upload file the system is working for a few moments and let's see if we get an error I don't think so I hope not Well, let the system continue working here. What I want to show you here is the, the Cloud Storage Studio from Sarah Prada. Uh, these guys did a great job in building an explorer with which you can uh, take a look uh, into your your tables, queues and, and blob store containers. And for our purposes, I can open here the, the queue area. Um, it will display a list of all queues in my on my machine on my development storage maybe mm. maybe I have some problems because of the the power down I had a few moments ago so I will restart Sarah Breda here uh, connect to development storage again. Yep, and open queues. I said open queues. Yeah, here we have our order queue, and as you can see here, you have 149 entries, and every message, every single message inside the queue, consists of the unique identifier. And this unique identifier is the order ID, and with this order ID, we will later on take a look in the order payload table that has been created uh, for us too. And here we see the, the records added to the table. In our case, all the records have the, the same structure, they have the same schema, because we also always use the, the, um, the order class to store order payloads in the table. And if we double click on such a row, you see the key value pairs with the data types here. And here you have the row key, and this is the order ID that the worker would receive through the queue. Well, so. Our web role works perfectly right. It sends messages through the queue. It sends the payload through table storage. And the next step will be uh, to finish the worker role so that worker role picks up the, the messages from the queue and does the necessary processing. This will be the content of part three of this webcast.